Thank you, Pastor Steve. Well, relationships. Jesus is the answer to or for relationships. That's a very large subject, to say the least. Just as an introduction, I will look at my watch. Five past two. All right. We, uh, there are relationship problems everywhere. They range from international relationship problems to national relationship problems to family relationship problems and, of course, personal one-to-one relationship problems. We are not doing very well, the human race, in this regard. What I want to talk about, of course, today is the issue of relationships with respect to individuals. Now, Jesus is the answer to all of these things. Some of the international and national issues we don't believe are going to be resolved until Jesus comes back to this earth and we believe that will be soon. We don't know when, despite that man in America knowing the day. But uh, he was wrong and he'll be wrong on October the 21st when he says it actually is going to happen. But nevertheless, when Jesus does come back, he, with those ruling and reigning with him, will start to sort out the international and national problems of mankind. But for now, we really are worried about family and concerned about giving people who are visitors here particularly the answer to the relationship problems in their families, in their communities, and of course in their personal relationships one-to-one. We are all individuals, of course. Uh, it may, you may come as a surprise to you, but we spend more time with ourselves than with anybody else. And we spend a lot of time thinking. Some of that thinking is good, some of that thinking is fairly pointless. I speak for myself as well as anybody else. But look, whoever we are, whatever our race, whatever our colour, our age, our education, our material well-being or not, our culture, God has made us all the family of man. God has made us the family of man. That's his purpose, his intention. And really the substance, unless you're a hermit, the, and the, that's got to be a very lonely life. Life is really all about relationships. Firstly with God. And Jesus is the answer to the relationship with God. And that's been spoken about already and will continue to be spoken about. And the personal relationship that comes with God through the infilling of the Holy Spirit, the obedience to his gospel, to be baptised and to be filled with the Holy Ghost, speaking in other tongues. And the relationship with God and Jesus is established at that moment, unlike any other relationship. But then we have personal relationships in our own family, in our extended families, in the church, in the community, and of course at work or school or wherever else we are spending our time. Our relationships, our life really is critically, its uh, happiness, its contentment, is critically dependent on our relationship with other people. I repeat what I said a moment ago, it's not being an individual separate from other people. God has intended us to be with other people. He did not make us to be lonely. He made us so that we share the things that he has provided for us, the the beautiful environment in which we live, which as you all are well aware, is being slowly, or perhaps not so slowly, destroyed by the greed and the pride of man. But he gave us a beautiful environment to live in, to share with one another. We need time alone to, to contemplate our life and to pray and to be one with God, but most of the time, one way or another, we are sharing our life with other people. So all I can do uh, this morning, this afternoon, is try and establish a couple of foundation principles as to how God has intended that to be. And in Matthew chapter 22, verse 36 through through to verse 40, there's something that's very well known where the, uh, Jesus was asked a question uh, by one of the lawyers of, uh, of Israel, which is the great commandment of the law? And Jesus said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul and your mind. Elsewhere, it says your strength as well. This is the first and great commandment. The second is like unto it, you shall love your neighbour as yourself. Other people on these two commandments depend or hang on the law and the prophets. 
So the foundation thing in relationships is love. Firstly, love of God. And the love that we have for God, a man or a woman is able to have with God through the gift of the Holy Spirit, and the love that God gives back to that person, they are able to share and, uh, and have a part of their relationship with other human beings. Love God, love people. That's the first and most important foundation thing in any effective and good relationship. And it's not just a state of being on your part. That has to be expressed both in words, the way you communicate, we communicate, and our actions towards other people. It's not a noun, it's a verb. Love is a doing word. So we must remember that that's what God has given us, those of us filled with the Holy Spirit, those of you who are not, this is for you, this is something for you to look forward to. To be able to be towards other men and women in a way that you never thought possible, with a love in your heart, and an empathy and an understanding of other people's needs regardless of who they are that you didn't have before. We we're able to do that when we're filled with the Holy Spirit. There's another important part of how we, how that love relationship between individual people is actually worked out. And it's the, the part of the, the Lord's Prayer so-called uh, that was repeated by Jesus. We all know the Lord's Prayer, after this manner pray ye so on, and we won't read it all, but down a little bit further it says, and leading us not into temptation, but, uh, sorry, verse 12, we forgive us our debts, this is Matthew 6, I mean, as we forgive our debtors, those that have got debt to us, lead us not into temptation, and so on, for if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive you. So forgiveness of the wrongs, whether they're real or imagined, that other people have done against us is absolutely fundamental to a loving relationship. The carrying of grudges and uh, the desire for justice that we might see it from our point of view, which extends right to national and interracial and interreligious uh, conflict in this world um, can only be dealt with because of the, the forgiveness that is able to be given when we understand how much God has forgiven us. God has forgiven us for nailing his son to the cross. The human us, the human beings, the, the human race. So forgiveness, so it's love, and one of the important working out of love is forgiveness for other people. We make mistakes, we, we, we like, we want people to be able to forgive us, we therefore must see that we are and it's necessary for us to forgive others. In our personal relationships, some of those personal relationships are very loving. Some people are loving and gracious and kind in their relationships with others, with us. Some are frustrating. Anybody had frustrating relationships with other people? I think you probably have. Anybody had annoying relationships with other people? Some of those are hurtful. There's all the right, some of them are difficult. There's a whole range of things that can happen in relationships between individuals and in groups. What we can do is change the way we respond and react to the relationship issues that we are involved in. We can change relationships by the way we are. Don't worry about the other person. We need to be concerned, and I keep repeating for the sake of new people, they are able to do this because of the Holy Spirit and because of an understanding and appreciation personally of the love of God in our lives, that is able to be worked out in the way we relate to other people. There are, there are four chapters that I particularly like, and we're not going to look at four chapters, of course, in a couple of minutes that I think give simple and clear guidelines for the working out of how we are to be in order to have an impact and a change in the relationships that we're involved in. Uh, the first chapter uh, is in Colossians in chapter 3, and some of the things that are uh, covered in this chapter are where it tells us to put to death a whole range, this is verse 5, a whole range of different um, natural, carnal aspects of our human nature we are to 
put those things to death. We have to be quite specific about putting them to death. Uh, it goes on to amplify some of those things and expand on them in verse 8. Things like anger and wrath and malice and blasphemy and bad way of speaking, filthy communication. It tells us not to lie. It tells us to put off the old nature and put on the nature of Christ. It tells us there is no division amongst men, whether you're Greek or Jew or you're circumcised or not or you're barbarian or you're a Scythian or whatever you are, it doesn't make any difference. We are to put on, as the elect of God, the children of the family of God, the nature of the Son of God, Jesus Christ. It talks about kindness, humility, long-suffering and so on, forgiving one another. A wonderful verse 13 here, forbearing one another. If we are able to forbear one another and forgive one another, if we have a quarrel, whether it's personal or whether it's national or international, we wouldn't have the world, the state of the world that we have now. We would have something different because it goes on to say, even as Christ has forgiven you, so also do you with respect to others. And above all things, put on the love of God. There it is, that foundation thing. We won't go there, but 1 Corinthians 13 talks to us about the characteristics, the qualities, the nature of the love of God for us. We are able, through the Holy Spirit, to put on those things, to have those same qualities and character in our love as it, as it is expressed towards other people as well. A wonderful chapter. It's not, it doesn't describe something that is remote from us. It describes something that is, that is ours through the gift of the Holy Spirit. And we are encouraged and directed to exercise it and to make it manifest in the way we are towards others. Galatians 5, the fruit of the Holy Spirit, is the third chapter that really, really is something that, for me, I believe I need to think about and I encourage other people to pray about. You know the story there, most of you, and you know the image of the tree with fruit and the fruit of the Holy Spirit. And I believe what we've got to, we have to focus and pray about and think about those fruit of the Holy Spirit, love, joy, meekness, long-suffering, temperance, goodness, faith, these things, and really consciously pray about them. We have the capacity now with the Holy Spirit that we didn't have before so that that fruit grows strongly in our lives. And what happens then is that other people can take that fruit from you and be nourished by it and be encouraged by it and share in the blessing that God has given you as that fruit is growing strongly in your life. So that, for me, is a very important part of how we actually set about expressing the love of God through the fruit of the Holy Spirit. And lastly, but not least, the tongue. Everybody knows chapter, well, most of you, James chapter 3, the tongue. The things that we, the way we communicate, the tongue is an unruly member, unruly evil, and so on. The great thing about that verse is that it is not just empty words, it's something we can't do. It says that no man can tame, but the Holy Spirit can. It talks about wisdom at the end of the chapter. But for those that may be new here, I'll read a couple of verses at the start. Even so, the tongue is a little member and boasts great things. Doesn't man do that? Behold, how great a matter a little fire kindles. Tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity, and so on. The tongue can no man tame an unruly evil full of deadly poison. We bless God, but we curse men, and so on. We have a problem, so we have to think about communication. When we communicate as Jesus would communicate, without wrath, without anger, but with the love and the purpose and sometimes the firm correction from the word of God, there is a wonderful result. The last two verses of this chapter three, sorry, the last four verses I will read to finish. Firstly, verse 15 refers to the bitter envying and things that come out of the heart of man. It says, this wisdom descends not from above, but is earthly, sensual, and devilish. For where envying and strife is, there are confusion in every evil work. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, peaceable. Are we peaceable? Are we gentle? Are we easy to be entreated? Are we full of mercy and good fruits? Without wrangling or partiality, it says in the King James Bible, without hypocrisy, and this wonderful result, the fruit of righteous, righteousness, right standing 
with God and as a consequence with one another, you know. The fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. If all the relationships in the world were able to be the conclusion of any relationship or the working out of relationships was peace, won't we have a wonderful world when Jesus comes back? Amen.